Hello everyone, and especially to Kelly in Topeka, Kansas. This is See More Better with FreePrescriptionLenses.com. Please call me Mo, Mo Better, because that's what I'm going to have you seeing is Mo Better. Now here's a good teaching moment. Kelly saw some of my previous videos and my social media pics where I've taken pictures of silhouette frames. When I say silhouette, they are the drill mount frames where you literally drill holes in the lens to mount them. I do have access to them. I have a wonderful, well, mostly wonderful <laughs> web designer. Hang on, he might be watching this. Yeah, he's the greatest. Um, but we can't figure out how all the possible different combinations of silhouettes to have on the website. It's not like the Ray-Bans and Oakleys that come in one or two sizes. You know, 15 different color silhouettes come in. For starters, you can get them in just about any shape. And then you can also get them, they have different bridge widths here 17 19 and 21 they have different temple lengths depending on the series they have different types of series which i'll show you this one uh actually is the same as mine and they have a different color so kelly reached out to me and said can you cut i want this color frame i want this shape lens and this size and i said yes i can make that happen so that's what we did um let me take everything out of the original packaging as Silhouette sends it to me. This is, again, Series, also known as Chassis 7581. The color is 6062, which is the Bordeaux wine. It's the reddish color. It has a 19 bridge with a 145 temple length. I'm going to take everything out and show it to you. Of course, it has the little Silhouette cleaning cloth on the inside there. And the frame comes to me with... A plastic sleeve here and um, the the temples and the bridge mounted separately where I can just take those off and which I do of course it comes with a little plastic sleeve on the temple to protect the temples from rubbing together during shipping but what I'm going to do is go ahead and program this into the computer in fact it should be in here this is the shape 7610 so I'm going to do a quick look through the file for 7610 and this is going to be size 50 Actually, I think I may have to look somewhere else. Yeah, let me do this. Let's go to this file. Look for 7610 size 50. And that shape comes up on the computer. It already has the drill holes aligned where they're supposed to be. I'm going to bring it up onto the next screen. And so the pupillary distance for the right eye is 35. The computer happens to have this one at 32, so I'm going to go up to 35. The optical center height, the vertical decentration will be 20. That's the optical center where the invisible bifocal will sit and change the layouts for the invisible bifocal. Now I've got the lenses prepped. Again, there's two types of bifocals. There's the classic line style. If you can see the line that is in there, we have to move it around. If you can see, this has none of that. That is truly invisible. So I'm, I have the lenses prepped, the optical center with two layout lines. That go, the blue cross is the geometric center of your frame. Kelly's eye is just above that. So it's going to go above that blue cross. And then those two dots tells me that it's laid out in there perfectly. Get everything lined up there. And oh, I almost forgot. i got to put these on there. This is a block. Or one without the sticker on there already. Called, I like to call them Jenny from the block. I need to attach two double-sided adhesive stickers. Of which I've got two here. The black side is the sticky side. I'm going to line that up on there. Do the same thing now on this one. The On the back is a silver button that is a magnet. It's going to do its job twice today. The first time it's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the arm. But let me pull away the paper to make the black side sticky. Line up that magnet. Double check that everything is laid out in there perfectly. And it is so. Hang on, hang on. Just getting everything perfect. Take the time to do that. Hit that button, the arm's going to come down place the block onto the right lens. We're going to do the same thing now for the lens that ain't right, which will be played today by the left lens. Take the paper off to make it sticky, line up the magnet. The pupillary distance for the left eye is 36. Tap that button, we're going to go up to 36. Get that laid out as such. And... That's where it's supposed to be, same optical center height. That's lined up perfectly. Make sure the lens is large enough to fit into the frame. There's my thumb. There's my index finger. Make sure everything is laid out perfectly. And go. Hit that button now. The arm's going to come down and place the block onto the left lens. 
Now this is the edger. This is what's going to do all the work while I run my mouth. It costs $40,000. It weighs 200 pounds. I recommend everyone go out, buy their own, put it on your kitchen counter. Then you can cut your own lenses at home and you won't need this guy with the two thumbs and the bad jokes to do it for you. But let's show you some stuff that you normally don't see. This is what I'm paid an extra $5,000 for is the drill capacity for this edger. That little drill bit right there along with the software it's cost an extra $5,000. I could get this cheaper for $35,000, but I want to be able to do drill mount frames. And of course, I don't charge extra for that. That's why everyone else generally does charge about $40 for the drill mounts, but um, it's all taken care of here. So, let's see. I'm going to wake up the computer. It's going to show 7610. It's in the database. Those are the two drill holes on one side of the lens, the two drill holes on the other side of the lens. I'm not going to polish the edge of the lens. I am going to put a safety bevel on the front convex surface of the lens and a slightly heavier one on the rear concave surface of the lens. Press that on there firmly. Put that into the chuck, as I like to call it, the Charles, because I don't know this machine well enough to call it. Say it with me, chuck. So, hit the green button, which is start in every language. The door closes, the clamp shuts. The lens is going to be traced by two wide styluses making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame. You can see as it's going around tracing the shape. A routine measurement to figure out where if this were a metal frame. Now it's actually checking the thickness of the lens at every point where it's going to be drilling the holes to make sure it is thick enough for that. Now these are, better check, yeah, these are polycarbonate lenses. You will see the water spraying in the back in just a moment. That is there to catch the optical sawdust as it comes off the wheel. Polycarbonate lenses cut dry where plastic, high-index plastic, and Trivex lenses cut wet. Meaning that water sprays onto the lens for the duration of the cutting cycle. Now water will spray onto this lens for the last 20 seconds just to wash away any optical debris that you may see beginning to form as soon as it does touch down onto the cutting wheel. As I mentioned, your lenses are made out of polycarbonate. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They are virtually unbreakable. They are high impact ballistics grade lenses. They also have 100% UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin there in Topeka, Kansas. This is permanent and never needs to be reapplied. This is the same lens materials that our soldiers wear overseas in combat zones to protect their eyes from shrapnel and flying debris. It's also the same lens material that OSHA requires in safety glasses. It is primarily used because as I drill the holes in the lens to, to mount them, this is an unbreakable material. So not today, not tomorrow, but if I use plastic, the corner of that lens would break off. So again, it's routine measurement it does on every lens. Check the thickness of the lens and is now going to do the drill holes. I should have washed the door a little bit better. Actually, I guess it's going to smooth out any rough edges left over from the cutting surface. You can see a little optical sawdust, a little schwarf on the edge of the lens. So water is spraying on there to wash some of that off. Of course the safety wheel will get that too, if it doesn't create its own. So the little lever is coming into view. At the end of that lever is a little spinning disc, something you would find if you have a Dremel tool. It's now applying the safety bevel, which is essentially using a very fine grit sandpaper, rotated very fast to smooth off any rough surfaces left on the front of the lens from the cutting surface. And then it's going to move ever so slightly and do the same thing on the rear surface, the concave surface of the lens. Do a slightly heavier version, so should any portion of that lens come into contact with your face, when you're wrestling, rough housing, or better yet, getting a big hug, falling asleep with a nap on, 
or falling asleep taking a nap on the couch or wherever you happen to nap there will be no rough edges cut to come in contact with the face so that same lever is going to come out and now it's going to rotate in the opposite direction and start to drill first the most nasal the closest to the lens which is two millimeters from the edge of the lens it's going to drill a 1.4 millimeter hole the drill bit itself is one millimeters in diameter so once it's through it's going to wiggle around you'll see it wiggle the drill stays the same the lens is going to move ever so slightly to ream it out now it's going to drill one that is five millimeters from the edge of the lens so this is what most optical shops will charge you $40 more for because the lab that will actually cut your lenses charges about $40 for this $10 per hole. Seems excessive, but again, it's $5,000 piece of equipment. It doesn't look like it, but between that and the software that will run the arm. Did I mention you get that for free every time you buy a silhouette frame from me? It's all those little things that people do to add on their commissions. I am not commission based. I am an optician. You tell me what you want. I'll be the consultant. I'll explain all the options. You tell me what you want and that is it. I get paid the same whether you buy one pair or a thousand pair. Well, I do get paid for each pair that I make, but I don't charge an extra. I don't get a commission for the transitions or the anti-glare. If you want it, great. If you don't, great. I'll cut any pair of lenses you want. Again, you get free lenses with the purchase of any frame from me. My receipt has my federal ID tax number, so if you have vision insurance or flex dollars, you will get reimbursed for this purchase, whether they are prescription or not. So in just a moment, I'll open this door with my mind. You like that? I can do other things with my mind. I can melt ice with my mind. I can. I just got to keep staring at it. The only thing I can't do is come up with new jokes. So, I'm going to go ahead and start cutting the left lens while I work on the right. Press that on there firmly. Put the magnet into the Chuck, the Charles, the Chuckster, Chucky baby. Hit the green arrow. Just like before, the door closes, the clamp shuts. The lens is going to be traced by two white styluses. Going around tracing the shape of the left side of the frame. Or the left lens in this case. Measuring the thickness of the lens at every point. Again, it's a routine measurement. Now it's checking the drill holes. Making sure that the lens is thick enough, and it is. I had this lens custom made. All the invisible bifocals need to be custom made, so I made sure to get the correct thickness of the lens. I'm gonna go ahead and take this block off. It is no longer needed. Pull the sticker away. Use my hand approved drying method. Throw that on there. Put that sticker there. Run my thumbnail around to get all the optical sawdust off the edge of the lens and I'll show you a little bit more of that later Ooh, I love it when it comes off in one big piece like that just like lint out of the dryer trap Can you see that on my thumbnail there drop that on the counter and once I have it all off of the lens I neatly and collect it into one pile and then I wipe it on the floor <laughs> So everybody wants to know how these silhouette lenses go together. Let me get all my tools ready. My cigar cutter. My pliers. These are my cutters if I was taking it apart. I will need that. To, uh, let's use that to ream out the holes. I'm going to do that first. I always like to smooth everything out. A lot of people who said they've gotten silhouettes would eventually form little tiny cracks in the edge of the lenses. That's because whoever cut their lenses did not do this. Same as the safety bevel going around the edge. I want to smooth out any rough surfaces so there's no tension at any point on the lens. It's that little, that's the difference between extra and extraordinary. It's that little extra at the beginning. It makes everything perfect. Clean that off. Dry that off. Oh, did I see some sawdust? So, Silhouette has both soft and hard bushings. I'm going to use the soft ones on these. This is what's going to go through the lens. Let me get it on something white so you might see that better. This is going to slide through there. It has a hard piece in the back. It's a little bit of a horseshoe shape. This is going to slide through the holes 
two pieces of metal are going to attach into there. I'm going to crimp it down. Let me do that one. Let me do that one. Now that they have are all the way through, I'm going to use my little cigar cutter. It's a little blade. Stick that in there. Snap down. That's going to trim it flush. That's what gets cut off. If you can see that little piece there on the counter, it was that. So minus the thickness of the lens, that is what gets trimmed off. Do the same thing on this side. Ah, a little piece inside there. My favorite optical tool. This is imported out of China. I buy them about 100 at a time. They won't sell you just one. You have to buy them in packs of 50 or 100. Oops. I'll get back to you little optical tools. Trim that off flush. Go ahead and get these cleaned out that's in there and because that kind of just crimps it down i like to open it back up with again my favorite optical tool ream that around just like the drill does make the hole a little bit larger and before i forget the invisible bifocal is about to be smudged off so i want to darken that again while we're working on it and again, guys, if you miss any of that, let me recap. <laughs> People start using that in their emails to me. I love it. So I can take this apart now. Silhouette Temple comes off. Well, the bridge first, then the temple. So that is it. That's what you're paying $279 for. But it is the memory metal titanium. So I'm going to press this on there firmly. So those two metal posts that has those little grooves in there are going to go inside that slot. I always start at the nose, press in, push that bushing back out so that is raised up, grab my pliers. Now this pair of pliers is made to pivot depending on the shape of the, again my favorite tool, versus the shape of the lens. This goes on the back of the lens, this goes on the front. And this will crimp on there. And hopefully you can see as I squeeze down. Oh, I missed it. I can't see what I'm holding above my head. And then that is on there firmly. Crimped in there. We're going to do the same thing now for the right temple. That is the left temple. We don't want to do that. This is the right temple. Again, the same thing. We're going to put those two posts into the lens. Into the bushings. Push that on there. Give a quick squeeze, and that is crimped on there. Give it one more for good luck. Look at that, perfect timing. The left lens is done. Take that out, dry that off. Let's see, take this off. We don't long, no longer need it. Pull the sticker away, dry that off, toss that there, put the sticker there, run my thumbnail around to get all the optical sawdust off. I'm just going to take one step back and let it fall directly on the floor this time. I went to school for years to learn how to make a mess like this. So kids, when you grow up, if you want to make a mess at your job, you got to stay in school. <sighs> That's a good dot that stayed on there. So let me, where's my reamer? Reamer, reamer. I do a little bit of right and left. second hole in no particular order I'm happy to do the nasal ones we're gonna start with the outside of this one come back to the inside hole I line it up against my thumb and so I make sure to put it right where it goes and no touching of that little sharp point on there onto the actual lens surface itself get two bushings of which I got here let me go ahead and put the lid on so I don't spill them yes I have spilled them onto the floor it costs $33 for a hundred of these again I don't charge for them that slides through the actual drill bit itself costs $50 it will do about 40 pairs of lenses that needs to be replaced again we're gonna snip this on there 
part of the reason why the lab charges about ten dollars per hole forty dollars for the for the set of which I do not charge the consumer for I'm one of the last people on the planet I can toss that back in there I'm gonna put my thumbtack back there where it belongs I've got a backup but I like the yellow I'm going with yellow today and did I did I ream that out I was talking I can't remember let me do this I don't think I did ream 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 Now here's another teaching moment too. The edges of these lenses are not polished. A polished lens, hang on, don't look at it. There's an Ultim that needs to be shipped out today with the four magnetic clips. A polished lens, of which I have in here, is, you can see the difference. Unpolished in my right hand, polished on the left. Some people feel that that looks better. And you know, you may have to argue, yes, that it does versus that. Some. Let me preface that by some people say it looks better when you're looking at their profile. How many people look at your profile versus dead on through the lens? So now if you have very thick lenses, I can see how you'd want to make that argument. But the thing is, you paid for the Crizal anti-glare coating on the front and the back to stop glare from the front and the back. But now when it's polished, you're letting glare in through the top and the sides of the lens. So I think it kind of defeats the purpose. Do you look better or do you want to visually see better? You will see better out of an unpolished lens. Anyone out there who has polished silhouette lenses now, cup your hands over your eyes, almost like if you were looking into a storefront window. Do this. I'm going to bring my hands up without moving them over the glasses, over your eyebrows and on the sides, just like they're blinders on the top and on the sides. And you will see better because there's no glare from overhead fluorescent lights, sunshine, and the works. Plus, it gives it a little bit of a skeleton edge going around the front, which again, cosmetically, people do it to think, think they see better, or look better, excuse me, look better, when there's a ghostly edge around because that's the glare from the light coming in. Let's see if I can amplify that a little bit more. So, you get a little ghost images on the edge of the lenses. You will not get that on an unpolished lens. So, there you have it. That's just my two cents. I'll get off my soapbox and get back to work. So we're going to slide that, the two posts into that, pinch on there. Pinch so hard, put a little groove in my finger. Put the pliers on there, give it a little squeeze. That is crimped in there well now. We're going to do the same thing now for the left temple. Come on, get in there, get in there. And... Come on, come on. It's always that last one that wants to fight. Oh, I'm doing it the wrong way, that's why. Give it a little squeeze. You can see the metal posts as they slide into the lens. Pull it down where I can see what I'm doing. That 40 year Vivers got me. I'm wearing the Essilor Ideal Advanced Invisible Bifocal 2. I can't see up close above my head. I have to hold things down to look through the progressive magnified portion of the lens. So that is it. That's the first time they've been put together. I see that I'm going to need to get these in standard alignment, but I'll do that in a moment. But first, I want to double check the prescription. We're going to come down here to the lensometer, turn it on. I don't have to put ink in it for once. Put the axis wheel on 147 because the right eye reads minus two and a quarter minus 50 at 147. I'm going to put it in above that black dot. And then when I read the power, I am getting minus two and a quarter. One tick mark past two on its way to three. You have two steps of astigmatism correction. We're going to end up at minus 275 if all goes well. Look at that. One tick mark away from three going, I mean towards three going away from two. That's because you have nine steps of far-sighted correction. You are nearsighted without your glasses on. Everything is much too large. That's why your lenses will minify. There's a minus sign. It is the opposite of a magnifying lens. Your lenses minify down to the correct size. Now, once it's the correct size, you have two steps of astigmatism correction. So you have two curves on your eye, a spherical curve, which is minus two and a quarter, and then 90 degrees apart, this is a 180 meridian, at 90 degrees apart you have a second curve which is your astigmatism, 
and that's how you line up those two curves to make everything nice and crisp like focusing something so we're going to turn that fine tune knob to 147 a straight line as i mentioned before 0 to 90 to 180 270 at the very bottom for those of you keeping score at home we're going to turn it past the 90 to about the 147 meridian your left eye you only need seven wait yeah that's right seven steps of far-sided correction and only one step of astigmatism correction at the 45th meridian exactly halfway between zero and 90 is 45. let's check that on your left lens of course i got to turn the axis wheel to 45 to read this properly and i am getting Minus 175, again, 1, 1 and a quarter, 150, 175, 2. Now we're going to end up at 2 when we check your one step of astigmatism correction. And we're at 2. Two doctors in the red. Your pupillary distance for the right eye is 35. For the six, for the left, excuse me, is 36 for a total of 71. I'm going to turn this card around. Place the PD stick against my thumb on your right lens. Let's put it on the millimeter side and not inches. And then we hold it up well it's worn off but we're one millimeter away from 70. we're going to check the optical the vertical decentration where the invisible bifocal is going to sit in front of your pupil we're at 20 millimeters there to the bottom of the lens Let's see if i can do it on a white background so you can see that a little bit better 20 millimeters so that is cut perfectly i do want to get the frame in standard alignment the lens looks like it's a little bit out so what i'm going to do is i like to use the pliers goes this way I'm going to bend it a little bit inward give it what's known as face form before there was almost too straight so I want to give it ever so slightly amount of curvature to that so it follows the contour of your face the same amount of wrap bend that inward that is better so you want a little bit of slight of that get it in standard alignment although that's kind of hard with these because there is no well, I guess there is, but you can see the, the curvature a little bit better now. So this is the moment that in every video that as I clean your lenses, I mention that when you get these in the mail, and of course free shipping anywhere in the U.S., and Topeka, Kansas is in the U.S., but when you get these in the mail, there's a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That is because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other, and because of that statistic, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them, but I'm going to get these, as you've seen, I got these in standard alignment, and let's see if mine will work. I'm part of that 80%. When I take mine off, let's see if they wobble on the counter. They do. You can see how this one touches, but that one does not. So that is mine. Same series. This is the 7589. This I'm wearing the cobalt blue because I'm all about some blue. But uh, pretty much the same frame, although this frame weighs so little, 1.5 grams, there's nothing lighter. In fact, these are pretty high-tech, developed by NASA. These are the only glasses allowed into space, as I mentioned, because they are 1.5 grams. Two, there's no screws to ever come loose. I forget who it was on takeoff. I think it was Gus Grissom. He was wearing some old Geek Chic, chunky Buddy Holly glasses. And they ha they're in the closed system, the mask with the respirator on, and they're breathing through that. And during the... There's so much g-force applied to the frame that a screw came loose and he sucked it into his lungs so nasa sat down with silhouette and says we got to get around this problem let me put mine back on so i can see what i'm doing yo so they developed a pair of glasses that has no screws no adjustments needed when you bump your head in zero gravity now nothing on god's green earth is unbreakable but these silhouettes will take more abuse than any other pair of frames the memory metal they also have a pair of traditional when I say traditional, Silhouette makes some titanium frames, again, very lightweight and strong, where the temples close. These temples do not close. It is the memory metal. The one downside to this frame, if you could say downside, is that it does require two hands to put on. This one you could grab with one hand and put on. The memory metal frames do require two hands. But once you're in a progressive lens, you put it on once and it stays on there all day. It's only the millennials who are on and off at the computer or reading or on their cell phones. But again, this is the Silhouette 7581. It happens to sell for $279. The Essilor Ideal Advance, which is Essilor's premier digital freeform lens, 
It sells for $149.99. The Transitions Gray at $69.99. At the time of this filming, still on the website, the Crizal adds $59.99. And I need to change that for a total of $558.97. This is a little bit more on the, the high end on what I offer. You millennials out there couldn't believe to pay that. But if anyone out there over the age of 40 who has priced a pair of invisible bifocals, especially in these... Most people sell the frame for $350. Most people sell the lens for $300 more. Transitions and Crizal each over $100. Most people will tell you they pay $800 to $900 to $1,000 for a pair of invisible bifocals with Transitions and Crizal in a silhouette frame. It's still just past the $550 mark, so almost halfway. Again, these frames are not on the website, so if you know what you want, I'm getting there. I'm working with my website designer. We've got to figure out a way to get these listed. But if you know what you want, like Kelly did, email me and I'll tell you how I can make it happen. Now again, you did get the transition, so let me go ahead and activate that. Which means I'm exposed them to a strong burst of ultraviolet light here in my transitions box. Now as you can see, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for a pair of transition lenses to get dark. It takes a little bit longer when you come back inside, 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15. Now Kelly, this is important. Pay attention, everyone else too. All transition lenses will get dark on day one and continue to darken every day for the first couple weeks they're exposed to the sun. After that, they will work for years at maximum performance. The only time they won't work is if you're behind the windshield of your car. Your windshield absorbs all the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays that cause your dashboard to crack from sitting in the sun all day. That's why they won't turn dark in a car. Now, if you have a convertible or a motorcycle, yes. Now again, this is the first time they've been darkened. They will continue to get darker. Come on, we talked about that, don't you remember? But uh, and as I keep running my mouth, we're gonna see, you'll see them as they as they lighten. Um, they're also temperature sensitive, meaning they'll get darker when it's 85 and below than they will when it's 95 and above. But I remind everyone, when it's 100 degrees outside, you're miserable, they're miserable. Nobody works 100% when it's 100 degrees. We all work a little bit better once it starts to cool off a little bit. Now, as you can see, they are starting to lighten and that's it hope you enjoyed watching please subscribe to my youtube channel to see more videos on eyeglasses being made and some other stuff i'm going to start to deviate as uh, as i get time and as creativity grabs me but uh you can follow me on facebook and instagram as free prescription lenses.com you can follow me on twitter as free rx lenses you can email me any questions on the contact me page on this website or email me directly at free prescription lenses at gmail.com Better yet, you can always leave a question or comment in the comment section below in this video. That way, other not only will I answer, but other people will be able to read from that. If you just email me, no one's going to learn from the questions that you ask. It's like someone asking a question in a classroom. Everyone gets to benefit from the smart person asking a question. So leave a question down below and everyone will learn along with me. I just might learn something myself. So that's it again. Kelly in Topeka, Kansas. Thank you for the purchase of the Silhouette. 7581 color 6062 which is the wine bordeaux you got the 19 bridge it comes in 17 19 and 21 width and the 145 temple length i think it comes 140 145 155 i can't remember i'll need to double check myself these are easy enough for you to adjust yourself up and down they don't weigh enough to slide the nose pads you can do yourself or take to an optical shop um what else is there the uh you can see as that's continued to lighten, I gave it a really strong burst of ultraviolet light twice. So that's why it's taking a little bit longer. Um, let's see, was there something else I was going to cover? I can't remember. If I do, I'll put it in the comment section below. I'm Seymour Better with free prescription lenses. Now, I'm Mo Better, and I just made your seeing Mo Better. So thank you, and everyone else got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.